I want those vines. I was working at uh, WRAS, Album 88 at Georgia State University as, as a DJ. Took over a radio show that focused on old time music and uh, I'd always, always been an adventurous listener looking for things and music I'd, I'd never heard before. And when I was doing the show, I had a lot of problems locating gospel reissues on CD and on LPs. I could find country, uh, I could find blues, I could find jazz, but the gospel was uh, much more difficult to track down. And so I got in touch with some of the 78 collectors uh, that have really large collections of 78s and started to realize, uh, you know, there's so much great music that's buried out there. And it's this curiosity that drives me to, you know, try to, try to piece it all together. Dusted Digital is a record company that I founded in 1999. Our first release was uh, Goodbye Babylon, which is six CDs of gospel music from 1902 to 1960. We pressed up a thousand of them and, and didn't know where it would go. I thought probably what was going to happen is we'd sell maybe 50 to 100 and you know I'd go back and and just have to find a new job and try to pay off all the debt I'd gotten myself into. But luckily it, it sort of took off and people really reacted to it. And, uh, the following year we were nominated for two Grammy Awards and we went out to, uh, to Los Angeles for the ceremony. Lance likes to say we went out and lost in person. But it was really, you know, just such an honor to be nominated and, and great to get to go out there. So we're here in our basement where we keep most of our inventory. We're constantly like reconfiguring and shuffling things around to make space. And it is sometimes pretty difficult. We have trucks that pull up with shipments and the drivers are usually caught totally off guard. Like, you know, where am I? What's going on? This isn't a real business. My wife and I run it pretty much as mom and pop type operation. Our goal is to sort of go back in time and, and take a look at, at music that we feel is overlooked and shine a light on, on the past. I've been an artist and an art professor for my working career, so music has been um, uh, an active side interest. I wouldn't say it's a hobby, it's uh, certainly more than a hobby. I just have a passion for folk music, particularly traditional music, songs and tunes that people learn in the family circle and uh, from others in oral tradition rather than the kind of folk music that's been, uh, well, uh, on the popular folk scene. I've done some collecting that's called shotgun collecting where you just go into a community and ask at the general store or filling stations anyone play fiddle uh, around or banjo. That sounds good to me. Is that right, all right for yeah. your voice? Mm -hmm. My first recordings uh, were made just out of interest uh, and also to try to have something to take back the way you take back a snapshot from, uh, from a trip visiting someone so that you have something to look at. Take off that new silk gown, oh, take it off from thee. It the way I got hooked up with Dust to Digital is actually Lance uh, sought me out and said, well, do you have some, some material? And I said, I've got lots of material. We started to talk about the uh, recordings he had made over the past 50 years. Uh, we started to pull out reel-to-reel -reel tapes, and he was playing stuff for me, and I got the same feeling that I'd gotten when I was listening to the tapes for Goodbye Babylon. Just, you know, why is this music not available for people to hear. And so that's how the Art of Field recording sort of uh, came to be. One thing that's invigorating to me is that this is not just going into archival material. There are still people around who treasure traditional music and are able to perform it wonderfully. Thank you.
Well, I've known uh, Bonnie for many years, and I was introduced by a friend of Bonnie's who uh, was interested in her art. Bonnie's a wonderful self-taught artist, and one afternoon about three years ago, Mary came to visit. And I think Bonnie had mentioned Mary as, a, as really the, the big singer of her father's songs. I had a cow that slobbered bad down in the Arkansas. I spent all the money I had down in the Arkansas. We lived on a farm, and when we'd get through, you know, getting all the, the animals fed and everything, said, Teach a cow to spit. We'd eat supper, and then Papa sat down in his chair, and uh, he'd sing these songs, and we always sat right there with him till he sung all he wanted to. I can't remember a, a lot of things back then, though, but I sure can remember him singing them songs. <laughs> okay. The night was dark and stormy, the moon was shining bright. The stars all cast a burning blaze on the stormy peaks at night. You know, it might not be as ubiquitous in the culture as it once was but it's still possible to find uh, people who are carrying on these early traditions that are still, still reborn in, in live performance.